Okay. Uh, great crowd. Really enjoyed this. We'd like to see this kind of crowd at every meeting. But uh, we'll go on. We've got a big day ahead of us. And uh, at this time, I'd like to ask uh, Kenny, call the roll, please. Master King? Here. Master Barker? Here. Master Hughes? Here. Master Combs? Here. Judge Clark? Here. Uh, you all have had a chance to look at the minutes of the last meeting. If there are no changes, no discussion, a motion be in order to approve those as submitted. So moved. Second. Master King? Yes. Master Barger? Yes. Master Hughes? Yes. Master Combs? Yes. Judge Clark? Yes. Uh, Treasurer's report, and Glenna is here with that for us this morning. I handed out paper copies today. It's not on your iPads. But our fund balance on August 31st, 2014 was $6,870,633.89. Our fund balance on uh, September 30th, 2014 is $5,775,552.85. Uh, this is our lowest revenue month in, in September. We start collecting our property tax in October and we'll be getting a, probably a almost $2 million check. We'll bring our balance back up. We also had to pay all of our liability taxes, property liability, workers' comp, all those insurances had to be paid in the first three months of the year. Um, our, if you flip through our balances, write these down so I'll flip through real quick. On our revenues, our general fund revenues are right at 45%, 45.6%. Our road fund is at 53.7% mainly because we get our 60% our uh, county road check in August. Our jail fund um, is at 30% jail fund revenues. Our LGA revenues are at 78.8%. And our CSEP revenues are at 17.6%. And our 911 revenues are at 30.6%. So they're all right on track. Our general fund expenditures at 21.4% and our road fund expenditures are at 28.4%. Our jail fund expenditures are at 27.8%. Our CSEP expenditures are at 16% and our 911 expenditures are at 22.3%. So everyone's right on track on their budgets. Um, does anybody have any questions? I might add that uh these are available to anybody that would like to have them. Uh, you just put in a request and uh, friend said will fix them for you by the end of the meeting. Or you can come in anytime and uh, request our budget, our quarterlies, you know, our expenditures and our revenues. That's all public record. So it's available to anybody and everybody. Thanks, Glenna. Okay, before we go into order of business, I'd like the court's permission to amend the agenda. We had a couple of really uh, interesting things come up just uh, really yesterday and uh, I'd like to add uh, the ARC grant to Southern Madison County Southern Madison County Water District and also they've just received uh, an outstanding award that they'd like to uh, talk about a little bit to the court so with the court's permission uh, first I would like to amend the agenda to add uh, Commissioner Tony Wilder and the Southern Madison Water Board and secondly is because Craig Williams was on the agenda and we love Craig to come but Craig usually takes about 30 minutes and we don't have 30 minutes so Craig volunteered to wait until the next meeting I didn't ask him I promise he volunteered to wait because really he gives a great report and it's something that uh, you know we're all very interested in dealing with the demilitarization <laughs> Yeah, process out there and where we are and he keeps us updated on that so uh, Craig's gonna wait till the next meeting so those are the two things that I would like to amend the agenda if everybody's okay with it. okay let's go on into order of business first uh, great announcement especially you know grants are few and far between now and uh, have to brag on the the board of Southern Madison water uh, they were able to put together a grant application uh, for uh, uh, some upgrade, it, and it doesn't include any new new customers. And you never see this out of a water district. Typically, they don't try to go after spend their own money and go after grant money 
unless they can include new customers. And this was a upgrade service only um, in southern Madison County that had had trouble a long, long time. And uh, Tony, I'd like to ask you to come up, please, and talk a little bit about it. Tony is the commissioner of the Department of Local Government. Uh, Tony is responsible for just about anything and everything dealing with any kind of grants. Uh, they handle all our county budgets. They do anything and everything dealing with county government. So, Tony, it's a great honor to have you here. We appreciate you taking the time to come over and talk to us a little bit and uh, make this uh, announcement. Judge, it's a pleasure to be here, members of the court. Uh, I wanted to come, by the way, I should, I'd be remiss if I didn't say, I, I brought your former county attorney back with you and I hope he's still welcome. His, <laughs> Bob, Bobby Russell's in the back there. He's, he's working for our department now. Judge, I, it, it's a real pleasure to be here. Uh, you know, I, I've been on that side of the, of the, of the, the podium here and uh, you know, it's kind of unusual for me to be on this side, to be honest with you. Uh, this Appalachian Regional Commission money is administered for the governor through our department for local government. And this particular grant carried with it some difficulties. It, it had to have a, a significant match. And to tell you the truth, we have so many needs in the rest of Appalachia. Madison County sometimes is not going to be able to make that cut. And uh, I just wanted to say we're, we're, the governor's announcing that we're granting $156,500 to be matched by Southern Madison Water District to make these improvements, which will result in more customers later because they've increased their capacity. And I want to say this, the governor, it's a tough, tough decision, decision process when we do ARC. We got a little bit of money and we got lots of needs. But I want to say this, this decision and this grant to Madison County is largely a result of the leadership of Judge Clark and Rita Smart and it's a testimony to their leadership. And I just wanted to address the court today and, and uh, sort of convey those thoughts and, uh, and I hope that uh, this grant will result in, again, uh, better capacity for Madison Southern Water District and more customers on the water and have a better quality of life. So it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, thank you for having me and uh, I'll stick around. I think we're gonna do something okay. else. Okay, right. good thank picture. You. Thank you, Tony, we appreciate it. And uh, Larry Todd, there's the chairman. Larry, you want to bring the board up and I'll let you be the spokesman. Talk to us a little bit about this uh, outstanding award that uh, you all have received. And I think, well, you talk a little bit about still in the hunt, we might say. for this water improvement. This is a thing we've been working on for seven or eight years. It, this is actually the second phase of it. We got some grant money a few years ago when you could get the grant money, and we done half of it, and then we couldn't get any more money to finish it up. And we, we talked with engineers, we talked with people trying to help us get this money, and they tell us to get this grant, you had to be in a distressed county. Madison County is not distressed, then we determined that where we were was doing this project was right on the Rockcastle County line. And so I mentioned that to the judge. I said, we're right on the line of being distressed. And so <laughs> <laughs> some way or another, he, he talked to the people up there and they convinced them that we were right there, right on the very line of being distressed. And some way or another, we got the money. So we get to finish this project up and uh, it will improve this water service out in that area quite a bit. It's a 100,000 gallon tank. Even though this sounds like a small amount, 156, this project was about 800,000. And we did it without borrowing any money. And uh, we had enough money to match the grant to 100, <coughs> 156,000. And so that keeps us from raising people's water rates, keeps their rates low. We haven't had a rate increase over there in 20 years. And uh, we have received probably in the last 10 years about $2 million from our leaders helping us get that money and that's been able to enable us to keep the rates as low as it is. And that, that's what helped us to get this award. Uh, Kentucky Rural Water Association, there's 365 utilities in the state of Kentucky. That's wastewater and drinking water. And once a year they uh, uh, honor someone in that, and it's called their Wooden Bucket Award. That's the highest award they've got. And uh, we didn't win that award, but we were one of the 10 finalists in that award out of uh, 
over the state. And uh, that's because we're not the biggest water district, but uh, they come up and looked at our system and uh, thought we were uh, providing good service at low rates. And uh, this, this, this is the award for 2014. They do that every year, but it's not what we did in 2014. It's really what we've done in the past 10 years to be able to get there. And so uh, I wanted to share that the physical court, if you, people ask me sometimes, who owns a water company? And some, um, I've been there 23 years. Somebody said, Larry, do you own that? <laughs> I said, well, I could. It fits in with my rest of my business. It's non-profit, so you know, maybe it would fit right in. <laughs> but it actually, uh, it actually belongs to the people. But if the water was turned off tomorrow, and, the, and you call down there and nobody answered the phone, then they would come over here and see these people. Hey, what happened to our water? So it's your responsibility to make sure that the water stays on and the people get good service by appointing the right people to these boards. And uh, we've had good board members over the last <coughs> 20 years. And uh, people that serve on the board now are myself, Ron DeVere, and Leonard Bratcher. He couldn't be here. But we wanted to share this with the court and with some of the previous commissioners, uh, Mr. Paul Reynolds, he served on there for 15 years. Uh, Jerry Combs served, he was elected sheriff. And then after that, Mike Cole served, he was elected sheriff. And I don't know if it's a training ground for the sheriff or what he was <laughs> uh, But we wanted to share that with those people that uh, helped us to get where we're at. Uh, we're one of the only, I think there's one other water district in the state that has no debt. And uh, we haven't had any debt there in the past uh, seven or eight years. Our, our bond was to be paid off in 2030, and we paid it off seven or eight years ago, a pretty good feat. And our payment on that bond was uh, 9000 a month. So we paid that off early, <clears throat> and now we take that 9000 we were paid in interest, and we uh, put that back into the system. Every, every year we try to do about a $100,000 improvement and that's the money that would have been going for interest. So that's, that's the philosophy we've had there. And, uh, and so we, thankfully somebody recognized that uh, we were doing a good job. And okay. That's about that's it. That's Two things, yeah. can, can we get a picture maybe with the, the board and uh, the previous members and maybe the court real quick? Beth and Tony, could you come up? Could we get one like down front? This is special. You all got to understand. I mean, 15 years ago, we got non-distressed money to do the sewer at Greens Crossing in Robbinsville, and since then, I mean, <clears throat> non-distressed counties just don't get ARC money. And I got to give all the thanks to the governor. I mean, without his really hands on this and and Commissioner Wilder, this never would have happened. I mean, and, and Southern Madison would have had to wait another two or three years to build the whole pot of money up. So this is what partnerships do. This is what everybody working together makes happen. But you have to give the credit to the governor and Tony. And of course, they call Rita before they make any decision dealing with Madison County. So it's a it's a great partnership, it really is. And can we get a picture, Mike? You wanna come down? Bobby, thanks for coming over. It's always a pleasure.
Okay. Uh, got some really good people are going to speak just a little bit. We won't, don't have a whole lot of business on the agenda. Uh, next, uh, Lori Tatum, who we all love uh, with Richmond Tourism, wanted to talk to us just a little bit today. Yeah, just really, really quick. Let me pass that down. I just wanted to tell everybody that company is coming. And we are going to have more company this Saturday than we have had in a long time. And I'm going to need the fiscal court's help to get that information out to your constituents to be sure to let people know that there's going to be just a little bit extra traffic this weekend. And knowing that lets us all kind of plan and prepare a little bit better. Um, for the first time since 1995, Eastern Kentucky University is going to be hosting the KMEA State Marching Band Tournament. And there's going to be 14,000 people here on Saturday. Um, we are got we have got our fingers crossed that our hometown um, team, I guess, Madison Central, uh, we all feel that we hope they're going to win it all. So um, it's going to be a wonderful thing. There's still some tickets available if people want to purchase those. But the main times from 3 o'clock to 7 o'clock, you're going to have an influx of all of these bands. There's going to be tractor trailers. There's going to be buses. There's going to be parents. And they're all going to be coming in off of exit 87 and coming down the bypass. So that's going to be a really highly trafficked time. So just want to prepare for that. Um, they are going to be staying in all of our hotels. They're going to be staying at Berea's hotels. Um, Jesse in our office has gone out and we've gone to every restaurant, every gas station. We've given maps. We've let everybody know that they're going to be here. So we're extremely thrilled and excited about that. But we also found out that we are having the state ladies bowling tournament at Galaxy Bowling Alley. And that's going to be about 300 people. So that side of town is going to have lots of ladies there bowling. They're also going to be spending the night with us. And then at Madison Central, we are hosting the Bluegrass State Games Cheer and Dance Competition. And that's 500 participants. <laughs> and there is also the Garth Brooks concert in Lexington. So we're going to have people probably overflow here. So we just wanted to let everybody know that company is coming. Be prepared. Be ready. Know that they're going to be here. Know that there's going to be a little bit of traffic, but it's all a, a great thing for us, and we're truly excited to be able to show off our city and our county, and I think everybody's going to have a wonderful time. And if anybody needs any extra copies of these, let me know. But if you all don't care to help me out on your social media and when talking to folks, just let them know that company's coming. And if there's any businesses or restaurants out here that want to get us special discounts, we'll actually have a booth set up all day at the um, – Band tournament that we'll be letting people know and giving out stuff so just let us know so Lori, i think it's a testament to you and your entire staff Thank you, and everybody else involved i mean you know it, i keep saying it gets better and better and better and this is just amazing that all this is coming to richmond right now it, it really is and I, I know a lot of people we we tend to focus sometimes <clears throat> about well we don't have the all a classic anymore we don't have the girls 16 and and we do hope that we get those back but in the last three years um richmond and madison county and berea we've had some of the best tourism economic revenue that we've had in three years so i think we're really doing well and, and people are really taking notice of our city and our county that they want to come here and visit Thank you but all thank very you much. Thank you all for your support. I truly appreciate and it. And whatever you need us to do, as always, we'll do. Well, um, Representative Smart didn't tell you, but she'd like for you to play the tuba. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a good one. <laughs> Thanks, Lori. And uh, Jennifer Lanehart's here with Hope's Wings, and we're having a special little thing, I think, November 3rd in the morning. Jennifer, yes. is that right? Yes. I'm here actually for a couple different reasons. Thank you all for letting me come. But the court has been very supportive of Hope's Wings. It's been instrumental in getting Hope's Wings established in our community. And so we like to give a yearly update with what we've done the previous year and what we plan to do. Um, so I'd like to do that and then also invite you to our event on November 3rd. But this year, Hope's Wings has been exceptionally busy. Um, we were able to get the shelter up and going again in 2012, thanks to the court, the city of Richmond, and Rita Smart. Um, thank you so much for what you do for us. But this past year, we have housed 127 women and children in our shelter. 51% of that number has been children that have stayed at our shelter this year. Um, that's pretty big. The first year we opened, it was 97, or in 2012, when we reopened. Um, there was 97 women and children. So the numbers increased a bit this past year. We have placed 19 families 
um, in their own homes in the Richmond and Berea communities. Those are thanks to transitional housing grants that we have through the Office of Violence Against Women and through the state, um, Kentucky Housing Corporation specifically. We have provided court advocacy to 630 people this year um, with our advocate. We've worked with the Richmond Police Department. Um, they now have a special victims investigator that works with Hope's Wings that focuses on domestic violence, sexual assault, and stalking. And so now Hope's Wings is part of a first response team. Um, thanks to that partnership, we've been able to, I think, Mark, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we've been able to change some policies within our justice system that have kind of eliminated some barriers for victims as they try to get help with the justice system and law enforcement. Um, but service of emergency protective orders has increased over 30 percent thanks to that partnership and we're particularly proud of that that means there are safer people in our community because of those partnerships so that's a little bit of what we've done this year um, and we hope to continue next year and grow the programs that we have with our housing um, especially putting people in to their own homes we're a three-phase program we have our emergency shelter phase we have where we're getting people out of crisis. We then have phase two, which is a congregant transitional housing. It means that they stay at the shelter for safety purposes, but while there, we work with them on meeting some goals, whether it be getting their GEDs, um, finding jobs because they've never had a job. Sometimes that requires some job skills trainings, um, filling out resumes, working on budgets that type of thing when they reach their goals we move them into phase three which is the transitional housing program out into the community once they're there we work on continuing that job building um, we work on budgeting how do they become self-sustainable in our community without the support of hope's wings or any other program so it is proven to be pretty successful um, for all of the families that we've put into the community it's been a hundred percent success rate none of them have returned to their abusers and we're proud of that number and we wanted to share it with you because without our community without the court we would not have been able to do that so thank you for the support that you give us every year and thank you, you for the wonderful job that you all do thank you. we appreciate it thank you and you all are invited to our coffee with the cause on november 3rd yes that's next monday before elections, but we will be hosting that at parties. You can come down, have some coffee and pastries on us. Feel free to make a donation. That would be great. As it's part of the Bluegrass Community um, Good Giving Challenge, we're participating in that this year. And so we're trying to make it a successful event. We're kicking off with Coffee with a Cause. So everybody's welcome to join us that morning, seven to nine at parties. Thanks, Thank Jennifer. You. Thank you. We appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Next on the agenda is uh, open bids on the Knobloch Bridge. I'll briefly explain that to you. Uh, the, the state rule and secondary road program, uh, Commissioner Pasley, has an 80-20 bridge program that we participated in a, uh, numerous times. Uh, we've worked with Garrett County, and then we usually do them on our own. But uh, Estill County called, uh, Judge called me and asked me if we would mind to participate and if we would mind to be the agent and make the request for the 80-20 funds. Uh, we were uh, approved and we've got the contract signed. So we went on and advertised this. This is down at Knoblick and right now it's just a bunch of old concrete culverts and every time the water gets up, the people have to drive miles and miles and miles to get out. So uh, we were able to secure the funding from the state and then the 20 percent Estill County and Madison County will put up 10 percent apiece and we'll get a new bridge down there so we have advertised that according to state regulations and uh, I think Mark has that I think we just got one bid in typically we build our own bridges in Madison County we've done about 20 bridges but we just don't have time at the present so we felt like we needed to go and get this done is go on and, and bid this one out so, Mark, if you don't mind to open the bid, please. Sure, Judge, I've received one bid this morning from Ron's Concrete that was properly sealed and received on October 24th at 11.50 in the morning, which I presume is the appropriate time frame. Uh, and again, this is, is from, you said I've got to take my glasses off to read. Uh, Ron's Concrete was uh, the bid, Judge, and I'll hand that to the clerk and then uh, we can proceed. Thank you. 
Okay. We'll let Leroy be back in town and he'll make a recommendation come at the next court meeting. Thanks, Ken. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, sir. Okay. Next, I've got a quick judge's report. Uh, first and foremost, we're honored to have Rita Smart here today. And Rita's got some very interesting material, uh, a map and also some funding for the next two years of what will be going on with highways and roads in Madison County. And Rita, at this time, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Judge, and thank you, members of the Fiscal Court. You know, I always feel like uh, your mother when I come because I've worked with so many of you for so long and done so many good projects. But uh, I'm glad to see uh, Leadership Madison County here today because I was in the charter class of Leadership Madison County. So we expect great things from you in the future too. And I always like to bring a little history lesson to the court. I remember as a young county extension agent, uh, we had to come to the court asking for the extension district to be formed. And I was up telling all the benefits and all the good things that the extension service could do. And I remember quite vividly that uh, one of the magistrates, Slick Parks, said to me, well, Miss Smart, that's good. But you know what the people of this county really want? They want roads. <laughs> <laughs> and over the years, and you all agree probably with him, we have learned that if you don't have the infrastructure, then you cannot have good jobs. You can't have ways for people to go to work, go to good schools, go to community activities, and have a quality of life. And I have lived in this county when there was a time we didn't have real good roads, Magistrate Combs. But um, when I went to Frankfurt, um, my main purpose there is to bring back, back the resources that the people of Madison County, their tax money that they have sent there. And so that's what I do every single day that I work for as the state representative. Now I feel a double obligation because I'm the only state representative that lives in this county. We actually have five that represent and vote on things, but I feel the responsibility because I see you people every day and you talk to me. And I'm a visual learner. I have to see things before me. And one of the first things when I went to Frankfurt, people would ask me about road projects. Where is my road project in the road plan? And the road project is, the book is about that thick, two or three books. And so it was frustrating to me. So I asked my staff if they would prepare a map for me. And so I have brought you all a copy of that map today and I want to leave it with you so that you, you yeah, hold that up the right way. Turn right side up. <laughs> Place this on. <laughs> so that you can see the major road projects in the six year road plan. And magistrates, I try to make sure that you have something in everybody's <coughs> district. Now these are the state projects and of course you have many many county projects that are going on and so that's what you just talked about the uh, the bridge project there we also work getting a lot of the rural road money to do uh, roads in the rural areas so fiscal court members I'm going to leave this map with you and you put it where the citizens can see and keep up with the major projects that are going on and then to make that happen, the governor has sent a check for you today in the amount of $75 million that will fund those major projects in the road plan. So it's a little bit before Christmas, but that's your Christmas project <laughs> uh, gift for this year. And I do consider it an honor to help you and represent you. And I do. Uh, want to tell the citizens that I'm open anytime and they do call me talk to me and again I think we do have a wonderful place to live people are jealous of us but the real difference between our county and some of the other counties 
are the citizens. Thank you. Thanks, Rita. Appreciate it. Rita, I'd like to remind her, and I'm sure she's aware of it, but our Valley View Ferry gets its money through the state road plan every two years, just like the rest of them. And uh, we appreciate what you can do there to keep it coming because we can't pay the bills without it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, wanted to talk a little bit about Relay for Life. Had their kickoff the other night, and it was great. It was down at Church at the Rock. And uh, Angel Powell is here. Angel, you want to come up and say a few words? She is the captain of County Cares. We have a team that competes every year. Well, they don't really compete. They just walk a whole lot. <laughs> and uh, she wanted to say just a few words. I didn't realize I was going to have to talk, but I'm the County Cares team captain. We have had, this is our fourth year having a team for the county. Um, we have raised, we normally raise around $2,000 every year. Uh, this year we had a, um, a fishing for a cause, kids fishing derby. Um, the weather kept it a little light. There wasn't a whole lot of people that showed up, but we still ended up raising close to $500 um, for that. And so hopefully this year we'll actually raise a little more than, than we have in the past years. Um, it's every July, I think it's July the 13th, or June the 13th this year, and everyone's welcome to come out, whether you have a team or um, you just want to walk or come and hang out for a little while and see what it's about. Um, it starts at 6 o'clock. But um, we are, I, I believe that we are the second in the nation, Madison County is, for raising money for the American Cancer Society, which is quite a, a, a huge thing, being that we are just a small county compared to the nation. So um, I'm not sure how much the amount is that we raise, but we're second in the nation. So It was interesting that it is the second largest fundraising relay for life in the country, uh, a little over $160,000. That varies a little bit each year, but it stays right around that amount. And uh, one thing that they talked about the other night is uh, some of the older ones can't stay up all night, so they're moving that from noon to midnight That's this right. year. We are. That's so uh, that'll make it a little more easier for some of us old people to go out and walk some. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. Angel. Appreciate it. Just another great organization. Uh, the Halloween Hoedown will be this Thursday, or Thursday the 30th from 6 to 8, and that'll be around the Courthouse Square. Uh, people can put up tables, booths, and hand out candy. <clears throat> candy. Trick or treat will be Friday night, and that's all th the two cities in the county from six to eight. And a big annual event is our Chamber Awards Banquet, and that's happening October 30th at Keene Johnson, and it kicks off with the reception at six o'clock. And I'm not going to tell you what time it's over because nobody ever knows. <laughs> Mindy, <laughs> it, could, it could be 9.30 or 10 or 10.30 or 11 or 11.30. <laughs> Just depends on uh, how many people like to talk a little bit. <laughs> but it's an exciting event, and everybody's invited to come. It's beautiful. I mean, they always do a great job, Mindy and her staff. So we're looking forward to the uh, Chamber Annual Awards Banquet, October 30th. And like I said, it starts at 6 at King Johnson. And uh, that's all I have in the judge's report. I'll ask for comments from department heads. Carl? Just to have uh, three things for you guys. Uh, number one, uh, on November the 6th, we'll be hosting the IPT at the Joint Information Center. That's where all 10 CSEP counties, the state, and FEMA headquarters and FEMA Region 4 show up. Uh, so if you're available, show up about 8.30, it'll uh, be over about 5 or 5.30. Uh, you're more than welcome to uh, come participate in the IPT meeting. Uh, next thing is uh, last uh, Tuesday, the 21st, had a little bit of issue on the interstate. I'm sure some of you lived through parts of it. Just wanted to give you an update on the situation that occurred. Uh, had a truck develop a leak. It was carrying ferric chloride, which is kind of acidic. It's got a pH of 1.6, which is pretty nasty stuff. Uh, we had a small spill to start. We just didn't know how big the spill would get. So that's why the interstate was closed down. That was done by KSP and Department of Transportation. Uh, it took us 
three trucks before we got it into a truck that could hold the liquid without leaking. I was on hazmats all day with that until 11 at night. Uh, we used our Everbridge system. It's the reverse 911 system, notified 269 people of, of the event. Our Facebook page had its best day ever for EMA CSEP. 100 new likes in one single day, which is unheard of for us. We average about two a day. Uh, <laughs> Over 100 people on Facebook shared the information we were posting on the interstate and the leak, and over 7,000 followed the spot posts we had that day. So that's pretty remarkable for us. I mean, it may not be much for the big, the big shots in Facebook, but for our little world of Facebook, that's a really big day. So we were pretty proud of that. And, and most of it was favorable, not a whole lot of unfavorable stuff, so that was even better. And then EOC status, I sent you guys an update pictures over the last week or so. I mean, that's where we're at up to this point. Uh, as you can see, it's starting to actually look like something instead of a, a demilitarization zone in a third world country. Uh, construction's coming up and, and we're moving along. And you know, how far behind we are, you know, it depends who you want to talk to on which side of the project. I would say we're about seven weeks behind. The uh, project team will tell you there are only four. We'll wait and see where we're at at the end, but it's somewhere between four and seven is a safe bet. Any questions on any of those pictures or anything? No? It's looking good. Coming along. All right. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Carl. Uh, I'd like to. Kenny, I know you could sign. I'd like to uh, ask the court to approve a raise in the precinct officer pay. We uh, started out in my term trying to see how much money we could save and reinvest that money back into the process. And the most important piece of the election are these precinct officers. The best equipment and the best job we could do on the ballots and everything doesn't amount to anything if the people at the polls that day aren't aren't good folks. And we feel like that uh, this raise will will help us retain some of those good people, maybe attract some more. So what we're talking about is a uh, $25 raise for the day, which would make it 125 for the day and 25 for the election school. Um, even with that increase in pay, we're still going to be saving $1,700 per cycle per election in savings from reducing the precincts and doing our own training and several things we've done to, to trim that budget as much as possible. Y'all doing an excellent job. I don't, it's Thank hard you. to keep that many qualified people. Yeah. yeah. So moved. Second. Master King? Yes. Mr. Barger? Yes. Mr. Hughes? Yes. Mr. Combs? Yes. Judge Clark? Yes. Well, I thank you as the chairman of the board. I know everybody, the 220 precinct officers we've got. Well, Fayette really, County pays really 250. Thing. Fayette County, I don't know how they do it. That's, that's, a, what that's its own economy. Yeah. Very much. I mean, when you start talking about how many precinct officers they've got, too, they've got, well, it's they've hard got to get good people. They in got 300 head. precincts. Sure, guys. Thank y'all very much. Thanks, Kenny. Uh, any other department heads, sheriff? Anything? Uh, if not, we're going to do comments from magistrates. Greg, you know, I got one from a uh, uh, lady at Rose Hill uh, is having a problem, which we know that's been uh, trailers out there that's been abandoned for a while. That. She's complaining, saying it's ice over and ain't nobody living in them. Uh, she's emailed me, and I get it. calls on it continually since I've been here. So, uh, what we're t trying to do, Greg, you know, we can go and mow the yards, bush hog the yards, and stuff, but we've got them all over the county, and people just they abandon them, leave them, and they run down. People steal the aluminum and stuff off of them. What we're trying to do is find somebody that would contract to come in and cut them up and haul them off for it. We've been unable to do that, uh, but we're still looking. Uh, Leroy's working hard on that to try to find, find some company that will come in for the material, and even we can you know, also compensate them for that too. But we've probably got 15 or 20 of those around the county right now, and it's something we've got to address. And we, we don't have the time. But there's no way we can get to it. So we're trying to find somebody that we could just sign a contract to, to take care of every one of those. And, and Mark knows, but first and foremost, we have to clear it with whoever the financial lien holder is, you know, and go through that process. Uh, and, and sometimes it's a mess. A lot of them are in jail. You can't get in a hold of them. Uh, you know, the finance companies or the banks that have, that have the liens on them are hard to get a hold of. But we're trying to get a system in place where we, when we go through the legality of that stuff, that we'll have a contractor come in, cut it up, haul it off. Uh, Roger. Uh, I want to thank Leadership Madison County for being here and showing an interest and concern in our county. And I appreciate you all. 
Uh, only other thing I got is that Leroy's not here. What about assault? Have we ever heard any more from the assault? Uh, we got a confirmation, but we haven't received delivery on anything. But we got the confirmation on the 7,000 tons. Okay. I guess we're going to have to live with the campaign signs and the ditch lines for another week, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> I like them in the ditch lines and on the state and well, the property. Well, we've got ordinances, as do the two cities. And, and I think talking with the mayors of the two cities and a lot of council members and commissioners and you all, you know, you, you can't keep people from putting signs on their own property. That's, right. you know, that's the Constitution. <laughs> but all three, we've all got uh, ordinances that affect this, and they all state that there will be no signs placed on county right-of-way, state right-of-way, city right-of-way, or federal right-of-way. So that's something that we can enforce, and uh, I, I think that we'll reiterate that uh, the next time. Apparently, we had so many candidates, and it just it got out of hand. But it's going to take a full-time crew just to go around and pick them up, because mm -hmm. a lot of them will put them up. As soon as you take them down, they'll be up the next day. But it's something that we really need to address in the future, because it's very embarrassing for this county when people from, especially, I mean, just like, We've got 14,000 people coming in here for a band, you know, concert competition, 500 coming in for a cheer competition, 300. And, I mean, you, you can't see or drive or anything else. So it's something that we really need to address. And I'm going to say if you went out and counted them, over 50% of the political signs are on one of those type right of ways. So it's something that we're really going to try to address and do something with. That's all I had, Joe. Good. Bill Ray? I want to welcome Leadership Madison County. Rita says she was a charter member. I wasn't far behind you. been several years ago, and uh, it's one of the uh, most rewarding uh, experiences, and you make lifelong friends, and it just prepares you for uh, uh, making a difference in the county in the future. And I just so much appreciate these folks that volunteer their time, like the judge and Mindy and all these folks that host these days. Uh, to spend time with you, and I, I hope that uh, you enjoy yourself and that you'll use what you learn to, to help the county going forward. And uh, congratulations to you for being accepted. Thanks, Bill. Right, Larry? Well, I too, I want to thank you all for being here. And, of course, today you'll be traveling to southern Madison County, which is my home district. And uh, I'm not the mayor and I'm not the judge, but I want to welcome you as the master to Berea. And I think after you see it, we have several here from Berea. You're going to fall in love with it because I did and I've been there forever. So I'm not going to tell you how long because I tell my age. But uh, I do welcome you all and I hope you have a good day and a good meal today. And I'm sure the judge is going to show you a good time. But other than that, Judge, I'm just glad to be here. Thank you all. And and it is interesting. I think, Mindy, this is my 19th year to serve as day chair for local government. And I've seen so many of you all go through this. And, and I mean, it's just, it's really great. It's a great experience. Uh, the local government day is just one little piece of this whole uh, leadership class. And we try to make it as interesting, try to let you all learn as much about local government as you can. Uh, as you all saw this morning, just trying to answer some questions. You know, we really need a whole day just for the departments of the county. And uh, we'll go to Berea, and you won't get that opportunity because we'll talk to Randy Stone, the city administrator and the mayor. Then we'll come back and talk to Mayor Barnes and Jimmy Howard, the, the city manager. But really, we could stretch this out into three full days with the three governments. We just, uh, you all don't have time. Uh, we'd love to do it, but there's so many things, but we appreciate it. I mean, to take time out of your schedules and every one of y'all professionals and you're busy. Uh, but we've had some great, great leaders go through this and uh, look forward to working with you all and spending the day. So uh, with that, I'll ask if there are any comments from the audience. Anybody like to come up? If not, uh, motion to pay the claims and approve the transfer. So moved. Second. Mr. King? Yes. Mr. Barger? Yes. Mr. Hughes? Yes. Mr. Combs? Yes. Judge Clark? Yes. Uh, thank those of you who aren't in leadership because we're going to go load a bus on a bus here in a little bit for coming in. We always like to see great crowds. Rita, thank you so much for coming in, sharing all that 
information with us? Can we take a picture of the check? Mm-hmm. Sure. And while we're